So I just did yoga first thing in the morning, every day for 30 days. To practice yoga is to swim in the estuaries between body and soul. It is to become simultaneously aware of your true physical and spiritual self. This combination of intentional posturing, breathing, and meditating is a ritual that dates back thousands of years. Yoga has withstood the test of time and is now available to ordinary people like you and me. We can all experience enlightenment and become true Zen masters. Hey, what do you want? Actually, you know what? I don't care. Don't call me back ever. All right? Bye. Namaste. So where were we? Oh yeah, yoga. I am so freaking enlightened after this challenge. I came into this a novice, but 30 days of consecutive yoga practice changed my perspective. Here's what happened. If I'm going to do something, I need to know why. So I asked Google. According to Yoga Journal, yoga originates from the Sanskrit word yuj, which roughly translates to union. About 2000 years ago, an Indian sage named Patanjali created a collection of almost 200 philosophical statements that serve as the guidebook for yoga today. He called this the Yoga Sutra. It's like the Bible of yoga, and it's available for just $6.99 on Amazon today. I see you, Patanjali. According to this ancient philosophy, what I focus on in yoga is called Hatha. This refers to the physical posturing or the poses that are designed to help you find balance between opposing forces within you. Hatha is the combination of two Sanskrit words, Ha and Tha, sun and moon, masculine and feminine, dare I say, yin and yang. Over the centuries, yoga has spread like wildfire out of India and across the globe, and today it's practiced by millions of modern Americans, many of whom are moms. In order to prepare for this challenge, I did my field research. I went ahead and attended a bunch of yoga classes and became one with the moms. They're onto something. Yoga means something different to each instructor, which got me thinking maybe yoga means something different to each student, and essentially means something different to everybody. So I felt comfortable after a while setting up my own little routine that I could do first thing in the morning to prepare me for the day that was exactly what I needed. Um, it took me about 15 to 30 minutes to complete depending on how fast or slow I took the poses and it went a little something like this. To warm up, a few vinyasas, including upward dog, downward dog, sun salutation, you know, the basics. At the beginning here, I'm just trying to get my body heat up. I don't think it's wise to engage in serious stretching with cold muscles. Once I'm warmed up, I move into the postures, holding each one for a breath or two or maybe three. This starts with runner stretch, then crescent pose, warrior two, reverse warrior, extended reverse warrior, triangle pose, twisting triangle pose, and then some chair poses. Chair is the worst. I hate chair. Then I do some crazy shit where I get into warrior two, lean forward, and wind up crossing my hands behind my back. Then some twisting prayer, some planks, and finally moving into my least favorite, Warrior 3, with some twisting variations. Warrior 3 is potentially even worse than chair. Then I'd end the posturing poses with a few big deep breaths and move into some seated stretches, including a few toe touches and some spinal twists. Then bridge, wheel, plow, and finally, the best pose ever, Shavasana, or Corpse Pose. Oh, Shavasana, what a way to work out. You just lay there and give your body permission to completely relax. It's yoga gold. You know what? Let's do some Shavasana right now. I'm gonna give you my top five takeaways, but um, let me finish my workout first. Takeaway one non-scale victories. I'm sorry guys, but I didn't really track anything for this challenge. Um, I didn't think that any external measurements would be very useful or even accurate since I've always been a pretty flexible guy and there's a million different ways to do yoga. I also didn't stop my gym routine for this and I didn't change my diet at all. Doing yoga didn't give me any drastic external changes, except for the fact that I grew a beard during this challenge, in which case, perhaps, yoga gives you facial hair. The biggest victory with yoga is how I felt all day after doing it. Maybe it's placebo, maybe I'm drinking the woo-woo Kool-Aid, 
but every morning after I did yoga, I felt great in my body and in my mind. If you could put that post-yoga feeling into a pill, I would be hooked. It's a non-scale victory, perhaps even a non-measurable victory. I don't always feel fantastic after a workout, but I always felt really good after doing yoga and that would last all day. Yoga, feels good, man. 30 days of yoga, here we go. We got two, th two sides, That's the beauty of life. Mm. Takeaway two, the crack. Every day, about 10 minutes into my routine after my muscles were warm and loose, I'd just be moving from a downward dog into an upward dog, and I would get this crazy crack. When I do yoga, I get a big back crack at like 10 minutes into it. It's like every time, and then my shoulder cracks at some point. And people often wonder, is cracking your back bad? From my research, I just think people don't know. From what I've read, the only time that you should really be concerned about your body cracking is if it comes with constant pain, irritation, or bloating around the source of the crack. For me, the back crack was just relieving. And now I've got like this new baseline. I live the cracked life. I like the crack. Sue me. I feel great. I just don't know if I can ever go back to not doing yoga now. Damn it, it's gonna take like so much time. <laughs> Takeaway three, checking in. Most humans wake up with a subconscious inclination to stretch. Yet, it's very easy to neglect this instinctive habit. I found yoga to be the ultimate way to check in with your body and your mind simultaneously. And it's important because your lifestyle and habits play a huge role in your performance in the gym or on the mat. And I talked about this in the video where I did 100 burpees a day for 30 days, but with yoga, it was even more obvious. Are you hungover? Are you overly caffeinated? Are you underslept? Then good luck in downward dog. Good luck in twisting triangle. Hell, good luck in shavasana. Yoga essentially made me more self-aware while I was doing the practice, and then this self-awareness lasted all day after the practice. And I think this is a great trait to carry with you, because according to Virginia Woolf, without self-awareness, we are as babies in the cradles. I ain't no baby. Don't call me a baby. Takeaway four, group versus solo yoga. Solo yoga is great, but it's just you. Group yoga is great, but it's not just you. The only constant variable that I've uncovered from doing yoga in classes and doing yoga on my own is this. In the classes, I pushed myself harder just because I care what other people think about me. I have a message for my guys out there, for my protein guzzling gym bros. It's not about being the best, it's just about getting better. I know that Martin Luther King Jr. wasn't talking about yoga when he said this next quote, but I think it applies. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. <sighs> it's just about showing up. A little bit's better than nothing, I think. This sort of brings me to my next point. Takeaway five, the struggle is real, specifically the internal struggle. Yoga is not the pose. Yoga is what happens in the mind between poses. That's something I heard from a yoga instructor at one of those classes I took. That quote is something that stuck with me through every day of the yoga challenge. I know I've been making a joke out of this pose so far, but Shavasana, corpse pose, it really is the hardest pose. Being present with your mind and body is much easier while you're moving and straining your muscles. Movement gives you something to focus on. Once you get into Shavasana, your body is still, which allows your mind to rise to the surface. And from my experience, one of two things will happen when you get into this pose. One, you experience a taste of enlightenment. You feel every muscle in your body relax while you relish in the well-deserved stillness of the present moment. This scenario happens about 25% of the time. The other 75% of the time, you lay there after a pretty good yoga session and the thoughts start to take over. You try to grasp onto some sense of stillness and then you wonder, did I send that email? Huh, I should probably take the dog out soon. Damn it, I'm still worried about the plastic straws and the turtles. The internal struggle is real 
And I don't think 30 days of yoga is gonna fix that. I'm not even sure that 30 years will. I think the most important thing I learned from yoga is that all we can do is try our best. I did yoga for 30 days, but then I did it for 30 more. And then I kept going. And now it's been nearly three months since the challenge and yoga has become part of my morning routine. I do it almost daily. I plan to take this practice forward with me into 2020 and I want to treat it as a daily ritual. These 30 day challenges have been really powerful for me because 30 days gives you enough time to realize if a habit is something that you want to keep up or that you want to drop off. Like I still don't do 100 burpees a day, but the yoga, that's definitely sticking around. Which is why in 2020, I planned out a full calendar year of 30 day challenges. I'll be documenting this journey on my YouTube channel so that we can all see which healthy habits end up sticking. But right now, I'd like to offer you an invitation to join me on this journey. Over on my website, you can get a free copy of this calendar. I designed it primarily in black and white on regular computer paper, so you should be able to print it out with no worries. Each month comes with a challenge and a few paragraphs. Each day has its own box. Every completed challenge gets an X. At the end of the year, there should be a ton of X's on this thing. Because you know I love crossing out boxes. Now, if you check out the calendar and you're really enthusiastic about this and you want to try some challenges and perhaps take things to the next level, then head over to my Patreon page. By becoming a patron and pledging just $3 a month, you'll get access to patron-only posts and discussions about the 2020 challenge calendar. I had an internal dilemma with this because I kind of wanted to make the group free, but I think $3 a month is just enough to weed out any trolls or potential spammers that would join into a public chat group. The true conversation can be authentic and among people who actually care. Let me be clear about this. There is no pressure for you to go to my website and get the free calendar. There is no pressure for you to join in on the Patreon group. Hell, there's even no pressure on you to like, comment, and subscribe to these videos. Do what you want. But I just want this to be my formal invitation to all of you to join a larger group of people who are like-minded and want to form healthy, lasting habits. I'm not one for New Year's resolutions, but 2020 is right around the corner, and I think that we could really make a change this year. We'll see.